This video is sponsored by lovely website creator Squarespace. The perfect place to go if you want to get a domain or create a website or an online store. Do you already know what your body type is? What about your vertical body type? Do you know that one? It's time to get measuring. To figure out what your general body type is, all we need to do is measure our chest, our waist and our hips. If you don't have a tape measure, you can use a piece of string to go around your waist and your chest and then you just lay it out on the table and use a ruler to calculate what your measurements are. To measure our chest, we go around and measure the widest part of the chest and make sure that the tape measure goes straight around your chest instead of you know being angled up or down. Don't use like a padded bra, use a soft shell bra or no bra at all so that you get really your own natural uh, measurements. Once we have that number, let's measure our waist and here we wanna go at the smallest part of our waist so not like around the belly button, that's usually not the smaller part. A little bit over the belly button, just underneath the ribs and I also find it helpful to contract my abs because that makes it easy to see where the smallest uh, part of the tummy is. Finally, we will need to find out how wide our hips are. And again, we want to measure at the widest part of the hip. So I find it helpful to stand in a mirror and look at the side of my butt to see where my butt is biggest. And that's where I wanna, you know, measure at the widest, widest part. I belong to the most common body shape for women and that is the pear shape or the triangle shape which means that proportionally my hips is the biggest point of my body. I have relatively small boobs and small waist and then my hips, they go out, childbearing or not. If you're pear shaped, you also usually have narrow shoulders, but I really don't. My shoulders are quite wide, so I'm like an exception to the pear family. Next up, we have my polar opposite, and that is the carrot or the inverted triangle, which means that the chest is the widest part and the hips are much narrower, usually with wide shoulders, and it creates like this very sporty kind of swimmer's athletic body. Very, very gorgeous. If all your measurements are quite even, so your chest, your waist and your hips are quite similar, you are a rectangle or a square shape, and this creates like a very androgynous, boyish look. I kind of think in my head that I am a rectangle. I really am not, but in my own mind, I identify as the boy. Another yummy body shape is the apple or the oval, which means that your waist is the widest part. So you have like a more rounded uh, figure, which is, you know, I think Greek goddess, kind of statuesque, voluptuous, gorgeous woman. As you can hear from the name, an apple who doesn't love juicy apples. The final general body shape I'm gonna talk about today, you probably all know which one it is. It is the most well-known one, the hourglass. Your boobs and your hips are similar and your waist is very small. So think about, you know, you look like you're wearing a corset. Depending on which body shape we have, we tend to feel comfortable in different types of clothing. So I really wanna make a video about dressing for different types of bodies. And the reason why I want to make this is not to say that if you're pear-shaped you have to wear this, if you're hourglass you should balance out your waist or something like this because I feel like we should all dress in whatever makes us feel happy and comfortable, not the type of clothes that someone else is telling us to wear because of our body shape. So for me this is more about finding out what parts of your body you really want to embrace and enhance instead of trying to balance everyone out to look like we all have the same body shape. What's the fun in that? So if you want me to make a video about dressing for different body shapes, give me a thumbs up or write to me in the comments that you think that a video like that would be helpful. We are moving on. What is your vertical body shape? Let's find out. How do we find out? Well, it's time for Little Miss measuring tape again. First of all, we need to find out our total length. And that can be pretty tricky to measure by yourself, so get help from a friend, stand really tall uh, by a wall and get someone to measure at the top of your head. Or if you don't have a friend, then put like a pencil or something on top of your head and make like a tiny mark on the wall that you can erase later and then measure it. Now let's figure out our proportions. Is our torso long, are our legs long or are we in complete balance? We need to measure our legs. To figure out how long our legs are, we need to measure from our leg line and our leg line is not the same as our hips because usually we tend to think that our legs start at the top of our hips but it's actually much lower than that so 
just above your crotch area, one inch maybe above your crotch. If you look in a mirror, you can kind of see if you draw a line where your legs look like they're starting. So it's a bit vague, I know, but it's just a little bit above the crotch. And if you measure from that point down to the floor, you will know how long your legs are. Now, this isn't exactly rocket science. You take your full body length and you delete the leg length and then you see the difference between the two. So if you have a torso the same length as your legs, you have a balanced body type. If your torso is longer than your legs, you have a long torso body type. And if your legs are the longest, you have, you guessed it, a long leg body type. Here's what we know. I am pear shaped and long legged. What about you guys? Tell me in the comments what you found out about yourself. I hope you learned something new. I sure did. If you guys want me to make a video about how to dress with different body types, do let me know in the comments or by giving me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new so that you don't miss out on that video in the future. Also, if you want fashion inspo for lovely passionate women like myself, find me on Instagram. I post outfits all the time. Maybe you are an inverted triangle and you want to create a fashion blog with styling tips for other gorgeous carrots or apples or pears. We're all the same. In that case, I really recommend that you go with Squarespace because it is an all-in-one platform. You can get the domain, you can create your website and you have gorgeous award-winning templates to choose from to get that specific style that you're after for your site. Me and David, when we created our own site, the masters.co, we used Squarespace. It wasn't even a question about it because we really enjoy, you know, modern, minimalist, sleek looking places and Squarespace really is top notch when it comes to the templates. Also, they have 24 seven customer services if you would run into any problems. Another great thing is the Squarespace email campaigns where you can send out invitations or newsletters or inform your customers or your fans about new products or stuff that is going on. And they have more than 30 starter layouts to choose from so that you can also customize these uh, emails to look exactly like you want them. So go ahead and get your free trial today at squarespace.com. And once you're ready to launch your site, Go to squarespace.com slash Mustard to get 10% off your first purchase. That's it for me today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Thank you, Squarespace, and see you next week. Puss puss and hello. So, you know, a Russian person that's like, so, oh, we found a Russian person that kind of looks like Jenny. Just place her here. Do, do you think I look Russian? <laughs> no, I was just thinking of a, 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 a pale Nordic country, kind of. <laughs> I do look a bit Russian. I don't sound very Russian though. No, you don't.